Hey guys and welcome to a new retro gaming hardware video. Well, kinda. We're gonna talk about some uh, new hardware that I got for uh, for this thing here. And if you don't know what this is, well then this video might not be for you so maybe you should head over to another video and check that out instead. But if you want to find out or if you already know this is a Sinclair ZX Spectrum 48k version and this is basically a British made home computer manufactured by Sinclair Research and I think it was introduced in 1982. And I had one of these when I was a kid and I just loved it to bits. It's, it's basically a very cheaply built and very simple home computer. It's like it just got the bare minimum, you know, of what you need to actually call it a computer. It's really, it, 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 it doesn't even have like a joystick port, but it's really a cool computer because there's thousands and thousands of games for this. And although it is very simply simple computer, there's still some really amazing games for it. I played a ton of games when I was a kid and I just loved this to bits. But this video is not going to be about the actual Spectrum, it's going to be about some hardware that I bought for it because I needed a way to get a proper video signal out of my Spectrum for, a, for an upcoming uh, YouTube video I'm making uh, where the Spectrum is involved. And there's no way of getting a proper video output on a standard Spectrum, at least not this version of it. There's only like an RF out, which is absolutely terrible and there's just no way I can use that. Uh, you do have video out on the pin connector here, if you can see it, hopefully, uh, but it's really quite awful quality and uh, not really usable. And there's also a way you could actually mod the Spectrum and actually replace the RF modulator and just well, not replace, you can actually remove it and just use the composite video that uh, is sent into the RF modulator. But that's not particularly a great quality either, so I thought, nah, I don't want to do that, I want to do something better. So I had a bit of a look around on the internet, and uh, this is what I found. This is what is known as a Spectra Plus 128. And this is a... Um, well, a hardware thing in a bob thing that you can connect to the expansion port of your Spectrum using this basically I can maybe I can show you here you can just hook it up like this and then you can kind of expand upon the functionality of your spectrum and this thing can actually do several different things it's really kind of a cool little device and this is uh, newly done I think it was introduced yeah 2012 I think you can see up there uh, it was built by a man called Paul Farrow and uh, this is you can see the spectra issue one so what does this thing do? Well, I'm just going to go through what you can do with this thing, but it's not really a review as such. It's just basically, it's going to be me talking a bit about this device. Uh, I'm not going to do a proper review because I'm only going to use it for two things really. And there's quite a few other things you can uh, do with this thing. Now there's two versions of the Spectra at the moment. There's the standard Spectra and the Spectra Plus 128. And the Plus 128 version, which is basically the one you see here, is I think the differences are that you can use this on a 128K Spectrum. There are several revisions of the Spectrum. So yeah, this one is the one you can use on both the 48K, the 16K and the 128K versions of the Spectrum. And also got, I think, slightly improved video output, which we're gonna talk about, uh, more about that soon. And I also got a manual with this device and this looks pretty cool, I just had to show you. It looks like kind of the, uh, the original manual for the Spectrum. At least the artwork is from the same artist, I think not exactly the same illustration but it looks pretty damn cool it's really a nice manual and this is actually I think this will you have, you have to pay extra for this I think maybe five quid or something like that to get the uh, get the manual printed uh, well it's four four seventy five pounds so that's what you have to pay if you want this on paper but you can just download this from the web page uh, where you buy the device if you want to, so you don't need to buy this. But this was very kindly gifted to me by Paul because he felt that he had taken too long delivering my my Spectra. But that wasn't really a problem as far as I was concerned, so thanks very much Paul, you're a nice guy. Now let's just go through what this uh, piece of hardware actually offers you. We have a SCART output here, that is where you connect your video. Um, output to your TV or to whatever. 
it will only output a uh, RGB signal. There's no composite signal or, uh, or YC, aka SVHS, only RGB. Nothing else is connected here. And the cool thing with this uh, device is that it doesn't really just collect the video signal from the actual hardware of the Spectrum. It actually generates the RGB signal from a video buffer or whatever you call it on the actual hardware here. So it actually reads the data straight from the memory of the ZX Spectrum, which generates a really, really nice looking RGB signal. Now you, I'm going to show you uh, some pictures of eventually of that, how that looks, because the video output quality is really, really quite nice. So it's really cool that it actually bypasses the uh, Spectrum hardware that normally generates the video signal, which is a bit shit, to be honest. So <laughs> this is pretty awesome. Here's also a little red light here that will turn on if you have problems or the hardware has problems generating the video signal or the RGB signal, because certain revisions of the Spectrum haven't got a, I think it's a Luma signal that should be outputted through the expansion bus. And if that is missing, the Spectra won't be able to uh, properly synchronize the RGB out. And then this little light will turn on and you will basically get a black screen as far as I know. This happened with my old Spectrum. I've got two of them. Uh, my old issue one, because there are several revisions and issues of the Spectrum. And this is a problem, I think, mainly on the, or only on the 16 or 48K rubber keyed versions of the Spectrum where this might be missing. And there's actually a um, guide in the manual that tells you how you can fix this. It's actually fixable. But if you have an older version of the Spectrum, or well, in general, if you intend to buy this, go to the web page. I'm going to put a link in the description and check out some information before you buy it, because there are certain issues with certain certain revisions of the Spectrum and certain hardware that may cause problems. So do check that out before you buy it. And there's also a pretty cool thing you can enable on the Spectrum that you can actually get the sound from the Spectrum beeper, if you know what that is. It's basically the Spectrum didn't have sound output via RF. It's actually only got a built-in, like a PC speaker on, the, on an early PC, you know. It's a pretty awfully sounding <laughs> little, little speaker that just goes beep and is annoying as all hell most of the time. Uh, this can actually be output through the SCART, which is kind of cool if you want to get a headache. <laughs> <laughs> now, maybe I'm a bit harsh on the Spectrum. There's actually some pretty cool games that actually make pretty good use of the built-in speaker. But if you want, you can get that output here as well, which is pretty damn awesome. This hardware will also actually add colors to the Spectrum. I think you can have up to 64 colors compared to the, uh, the usual 15 or I think it's 15 colors or 16 colors that the Spectrum could generate normally. And uh, now you can generate up to 64 colors with this device. And uh, you can even increase the color resolution of the Spectrum because the Spectrum had this weird limitation where it could only display two colors per eight by eight pixel squares. It's a kind of a limitation to make the computer cheaper, of course. So you can actually enhance that with this device. Now, why would you do that? Uh, I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe just to toy around with it. I really have no idea. I'm not going to be using this. So I just thought I'd mention it and I haven't tried it. So I have no idea uh, what to use that for. But I still think it's kind of cool, I guess, right? <laughs> and apparently you can even, if you have a 128K version of the Spectrum, you can have dual displays. So you can actually have the Spectre generate one video signal and the built-in video output of the Spectrum 128 can generate another one. I think it's two unique outputs. Why would you want to do that? I don't know. <laughs> kind of cool again, I guess. Nothing I'm going to be using, but I just thought I'd mention it. And if anyone's wondering, there is absolutely no delay on the output of, uh, of this SCART socket here. I can notice no lag at all. Of course, if you connect this to a, like an LCD or a modern flat screen, you will, of course, experience lag, but that is your monitor or TV that generates that problem, not the spectrum. The video signal is, as far as I can see, instant. So what else have we got here? Well, we've also got a Kempston joystick interface. I think that was the most common joystick interface for the spectrum. So uh, yeah, it's pretty damn awesome. Works great. Only thing maybe to note here is that the joystick port itself is actually connected only via the uh, solder points here. So there's nothing that kind of keeps this thing down. It's kind of feels like I might damage this if I keep connecting and disconnecting 
my uh, my joystick. It feels a bit stiff, but maybe that's just my my joystick that's a bit wonky. I don't know. But what I would suggest you do when you disconnect it is that you'd actually hold your fingers like this to uh, prevent you from putting too much stress on the soldering points. And you've also got an RS232 port here, uh, which you can use to, I think you can connect this to a printer if you wanna. So maybe if you like wrote a novel in the 80s and then realized, oh damn, how am I gonna print this from my Spectrum? Well, you can connect a printer here and then I guess at least print. Uh, and you can also use this in conjunction with this thing here, which is the uh, a cartridge port, which I'm gonna talk more about soon. Other than that, I suppose you could probably do something clever with the RS-232 port. I don't really know. Again, I'm not really that tech savvy or that particularly interested. I'm not going to be using this thing. But hey, it's there, so that's good, right? Another thing that's pretty cool is this reset button here, which you can use to uh, reset your Spectrum. Because the Spectrum didn't actually even have a power button, which is kind of amazing. But yeah, it didn't even have a reset button. So with this thing, you can just reset your Spectrum, which is kind of cool. You don't have to unplug it from the wall socket or unplug the power cord from the Spectrum. Nice and simple and works great. And there's also a way for you to connect additional hardware to this device if you want. There's like a throughput. Um, so the expansion port over here is matching this one over here. So if you want to connect additional hardware, you can do that actually. But apparently not everything works and it depends on what order you connect them if you connect them before the Spectra after the, the Spectra. But if you want to, you could connect like a memory card interface over here to kind of load games and stuff onto your Spectrum a bit faster. But do check the web page for information about this, maybe check the manual because apparently there's some restrictions there and some potential problems and I'm not really completely aware of every problem there might be. And there's also a bunch of dip switches that you can use to enable and disable the features of this car. So if you want to like, you know, disable the Kempston joystick port for, for whatever reason, maybe because there's some compatible compatibility issues so you want to be connecting like uh, a separate Kempston joystick interface or whatever, you can do that by switching these little dip switches on and off. And this is kind of listed in the manual, what these things will do. Now, what about this cartridge port that I mentioned before? This is actually pretty neat. This will actually accept, I think it's called Interface 2, Spectrum Interface 2 cartridges. There weren't that many made, but there were a couple of uh, Ultimate Play the Game games that you could connect to a cartridge interface that was called the Spectrum Interface 2 or something like that. Now they're pretty rare and there's not too many of them, but you can actually connect them here and, and play them on your Spectrum, which is pretty neat. And you can actually use this thing for something much cooler as well, that you can actually connect and buy a flashable ROM cartridge that you can put here and then you can program it via the RS-232 interface that you connect to your computer and then use a specific program that will allow you to program uh, this little ROM cartridge that, that you need to buy, it's not included. Uh, it seems a bit complicated though, so I'm not going to be doing that, I'm not going to be using this. Sounds pretty cool, but I'm probably going to be getting hold of a memory card solution instead. That's probably going to be a bit easier for me to use. And uh, I can ask Paul about this as well. And he said, yeah, it's probably easy for you to get a memory card solution instead of using this. But you can also use this, uh, according to the manual, to actually replace the ROM of the Spectrum if you want to. Uh, also, if you, I think there's a switch that you can change that will have this thing, this ROM that you put here, replace the entire ROM of the Spectrum. Why would you want to do that? I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> Probably pretty amazing for someone that's interested in hardware and mucking about with that. I'm not really interested in that. I'm more interested in the games. <laughs> so yeah. And apparently this cartridge connector is an optional fit when you buy the Spectra. So I'm not sure if this is included with the Plus version or he just included it on mine for whatever reason. I'm not sure, but do check that out. I don't think this is always fitted, the little connector here. So yeah, check the web page for information about that if you want to be buying this uh, device. Now here's a little bit of an annoyance with the with the Spectra. Once you've connected the uh, SCART connector, SCART plug here, it's a bit difficult connecting the power to the Spectrum. You kind of have to come in from 
from below here and try to connect it. It's a bit, bit annoying. It's not impossible. What I usually like to do instead is actually to, to uh, make sure that you haven't plugged in your power supply unit and just plug that in first like this and then you can connect the uh, Spectra interface. But make sure that you have not plugged in the power supply unit in the wall because then you might destroy the Spectra or indeed the Spectra, which is bad. Now the reason for me buying the Spectra was primarily, as I think I've already mentioned, was the Kempston joystick interface and the video output. So all the other features I haven't really tested. So as I've said before, this is not really a review as such, more of a brief look at and uh, a bit more in-depth look at the features that I'm using. And uh, let me just say the Kempston interface works great and I'm really happy as well with the uh, SCART output. The RGB output looks great and I've been using it on my Philips 14-inch CM8833 CRT monitor and it looks really good. Now I wanted to show you the quality so I tried to record the signal from the Spectra by using one of those cheap and nasty HDMI scalers or um, SCART to HDMI scalers that you can buy for about 70 quid or, or even cheaper on eBay. They're usually really rather awful, the quality, the build quality is awful and often the video quality is even worse. But the one I got was not too bad, the video output was pretty decent so it converted the uh, RGB SCART signal to an HDMI output but unfortunately my live gamer portable, which is my capture device, completely refused to record the uh, HDMI output and I did talk to Ava Media about this and apparently the Live Gamer Portable does not support all types of scalers for, for whatever reason. So I can't really show you the picture quality but what I've done is actually to just put my camera in front of my 14 inch CRT and just film some games for you to see and of course this is not really going to give you a complete appreciation of how good the video output really is from the Spectre. It's going to look a bit wonky. You're going to see some some issues with camera shake and, and you know whatever. Uh, it's not easy shooting a screen, especially not a small one like 14 inch CRT. But yeah, for whatever it's worth, you can kind of see here how good, hopefully at least, how good the video quality really is. But it's not really doing it any justice though. I also did try to connect the Spectra to my Samsung 42 inch uh, LCD panel but I experienced this kind of weird sync issue as you can see on the screen here right now. I'm not sure what the problem is. I did talk to Paul about it. He suspected that the TV was just a bit fussy with the sync signals and I'm kind of inclined to agree with him on that because when you you know mix old and new technology that's just asking for trouble really so unfortunately the quality is not as good on my LCD panel but the CRT looks really amazing and that is where I'm primarily going to be using uh, the Spectre anyway so it doesn't really uh, present a problem for me. Anyway that's about it just a short video about the Spectre I hope you liked it and maybe that it helped you out if you're considering to buy one of these uh, don't hesitate to check out Paul's uh, web page I'm going to put a link in the description and with that I'm just going to say thanks for watching hope you enjoy the video and hope to see you in the next one bye